It's December now and my Fisher 37 Cibonet has been lifted out and winterized. While I would rather be out sailing, the winds are stronger, the temperatures are colder, and the weather is just nasty. It's time now to indulge in the simple pleasure of reminiscing of the places that I visited this past summer. Always memorable and always spectacular. These visits are short but feel so cathartic and healing, providing me with some insights into the puzzle of rural coastal life of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. I am fortunate to be able to visit so many of these places that are no longer accessible to the average person. And hence my reason for bringing these videos to you, so that we can share in the elegance and boldness of these places together. This is about Places North. With two months of solid cruising in 2021 in Notre Dame Bay on the Northern Peninsula and in Labrador, I wanted this video as a quick review of my sail log for 2021. More detailed video will be produced over the coming months. Before I get to places north, I wanted to quickly touch on Notre Dame Bay. The weather and anchorages are unbeatable. In June, I spent time in places like Knights Island, Samson Island, and of course, Exploit Islands. But Fortune Harbor was particularly impressive with its huge, well-protected harbor. I anchored several times behind Gillespie Island, scooting around the harbor, checking out the old cemetery on the hill, and the bite just outside the harbor. Finally, it was the end of June. I departed for the northern destinations. It was a windy summer and I was delayed in several places, but it's always an opportunity to get to know the places and the people. St. Julian, situated between Conch and St. Anthony on the Great Northern Peninsula, had been on my bucket list for 2021, as it was an important fishing location on the French shore for centuries. However, the day I arrived, it was wet, but I did wander around a little. Julian Harbor, foreign raid. But I got to get out around and have a look. See what's going on here. Cemetery over there. This should be interesting. It seems to be a good anchorage to where I am. And again, northerly wind, it's kind of open. And I keep on pointing out cemetery over there. And I'm gonna be there in a little bit. Unfortunately, the wind came northerly and I had to move quickly. This quick visit wet my appetite for more and I returned in August. I meet up with a few dolphins on my way into St. Lanier, just 27 nautical miles from St. Julian's. I sail into St. Lanier twice this summer as it has all the necessities for the cruising sailor. A modern protected harbor, groceries, fuel, ice, dark tickle, and a long history. On my return in August, I wander around the place they call the French Beach, searching for the French gravesite, but to no avail. My next stop was Carpoon, just six nautical miles to the north, thankfully, as the wind had been howling for several days. It was still a bit raw when Eugene Flynn on Tulip and I depart, 
The seas are uncomfortable. We entered the Carpoon Island south entrance through the Whale and Partridge Points easily as the wind had died and the sun had come out. Carpoon, with its thousands of years of history, its exquisite landscapes, protected harbour and excellent hiking makes waiting several days for the weather enjoyable. Facebook, yeah. <laughs> Carpoon is an ideal location across the Straits of Belle Isle, with the Labrador current and a strong southwest wind, as well as the topography of Newfoundland and Labrador, it can be a lively crossing, so caution and good weather forecasting is critical. Fishermen had noted that any more than 20 knots of southwest wind in the Straits, it is advisable to stay tied to the wharf. My level of comfort is 15 to 20 knots or less. Tulip and Ingemar, Al Spurl and Randy Cole, cross over with me, which definitely reduced the stress factor. And finally there was Labrador. Beautiful, pristine, historic Labrador. It is a place that instills excitement for all things wild and magnificent. If that is not enough, the local Labradorians put the icing on the cake, always have time for you, and are genuinely pleased and proud that you are wandering around their big land. I arrive in Mary's Harbour just in time to meet with Cranky Goat Entertainment who are interested in experiencing some of the excitement and emotion of visiting remote locations in southern Labrador. Christopher Richardson and Peter Elliott were a pleasure to have on board. I will say though, they brought a little bit of camera gear. I think we got everything. Our first stop is Henley Harbour. When Christopher and I were planning this trip, I related to him we needed to make a stop here because the photography, along with the Labrador light, would be superb. And the solitude evokes a spiritual experience. I think Christopher was dubious, but after wandering around the community, visiting York Fort, and paying homage to those in the cemetery, the feelings were real and emotional. That was, uh, that was really something, just gorgeous. And this is, uh, the, the cemetery really is just so quiet and just can't help but feel some emotion here. I'm not a cranky goat now. I'm a sad, <laughs> soppy one. I mean, look, seriously, it just it just kind of touches you. It's yeah, amazing. It yeah. You look down, you see those buildings, and you go, "Who in those buildings is here in this cemetery?" Yeah. Just, when you start thinking about it, it's just really. It's an emotional experience. It is. Yeah. And it's Newfoundland and Labrador.
We sail farther north to George's Cove, which is located near Williams Harbour on the north shore of Granby Island. It's about 20 nautical miles north of Battle Harbour. George's Cove was a seasonal fishing community that has been settled since the 1800s. Mallory Hendrigan acts as our personal tour guide to show us around this interesting community. Hawk Harbour is our next stop, which is 30 miles north, a place that is reminiscent of the Walking Dead or a bombed out factory from World War II. It's actually a whaling station that was destroyed by fire on September 12, 1959. From a period of 1905 to 1959, the operation processed approximately 5,500 whales. Average employment was around 200 people. After two nights in Hawk Harbor, we move on to Triangle Harbor. It's about 15 nautical miles south. Like most places in Labrador, we have not been to Triangle. I am impressed by the small harbor, the solitude, the tranquility. It's exciting. We slip onto the wharf on shore of the depth, but hopefully we will not go aground. All we hear is the melodic splash of Sibonet's diesel motors cooling exhaust water. A few seagulls and nothing else. No one is here tonight. Triangle is all of ours to explore and wonder of the fishermen and women who work to make a living for themselves and their families. There are so many harbors in this area. We could spend the summer exploring Venice and Tickle, Norman's Bay, Snug Harbor, Pinson's Arm, and Square Island to name a few. Occasional Harbour, our final destination of the Cranky Goat Tour, extends inland by five miles. Cliffs tower up to 500 feet, and it's reported that the ocean swell does not reach into the anchorages. Besides being a great anchorage, I just love the name. We anchor in Arch Cove. This is my last day with Christopher and Peter. I am sorry to see them leave. We finish our trip off with a pot full of fresh Labrador mussels. H-O-E, my words for heaven on earth. Uh -huh. You have these moments and you hear things and you, wow. Yep, incredible. It's fresh. And oh yes, a cold Labrador shower. It has been a treat having these two gentlemen on board. This is goodbye. Well, goodbye for now. Yeah. Because there's never a, no word for goodbye in the Ojibwe language. It's just see you till next time. So. We had a fabulous trip. Fabulous time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Always felt safe. This is a guy who you're in good hands with. And uh, I would uh, I would come on board the Sibane anytime. 
And uh, well, for me, it was a great uh, time. I was a little apprehensive, I guess, having <laughs> two total strangers. But what's what do you say uh, when you you do these projects? We, we, it's cranky in name, but not nature. And we arrive as strangers, but leave as friends. As we leave Occasional Harbor, we are greeted by dolphins who exuberantly show us the way back to Mary's Harbor. And I am left to wander around another few days before returning home. I'm fairly sure they enjoyed their trip to places north. I am on my way to Petty Harbor, not far from Battle Harbor, maybe 15 nautical miles. I read that Captain Lloyd Bugden, a well-known mariner on this coast, noted that this was his favorite harbor. I am anxious to see this place. I had the pleasure of meeting Plez Kerr and his family along with Val King. Actually, Plez and his son Justin gave me quite the scare. I was totally focused on setting my anchor and hadn't heard them motor up to Sibonay. The first thing I heard were human voices. I was not expecting that. I could feel the pride that Plez and Val have of this place. It's a picturesque community that keeps me occupied with photography and some drone footage. I'm going to be on land and sea. I'm going to be on land and sea. I'm going to be on land and sea.